and welcome to this worship experience with Alora and Bethany United Churches. We're gathering online using Zoom on Sunday mornings at 1030. This is a recording of parts of this week's service. If you would like, you can join us live on Sundays. All you have to do is email me. My email address is minister Alora UC at Whiteman, that's W-I-G-H-T-M-A-N dot C-A. And I'll be glad to send you the sign-in information. My name is Greg Smith-Young, and I serve in ministry with both the Bethany and Alora congregations. At the end of this time, I'll have more to say about our communities of faith. But for now, let's get to it. We hope that this worship time is a blessing to you. As I'm leading worship today, I have behind me a banner that was crafted by Lynn Cowan from the Alora United Church Congregation. Uh, it hangs from our pulpit in our sanctuary. And uh, I love it. It shows the different seasons of the year, uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter. In this season that we're in, God is with us. And uh, let's take a moment to still ourselves and open ourselves to God's presence. Please join with me. Worship the Lord with gladness together. Celebrate God's presence with joy. For surely God is in this place. God, help me notice. Help us notice together. We come to worship and we we bring what we've been experiencing. We bring uh, the past week. So as we come together, let's pray and think about what we're bringing with us. Let us pray. God, thank you for today. And thank you for bringing us together in our many places into your one presence. And joining us together as this congregation of your people, praising you. We think about the things we bring with us to celebrate. Share in our joy. We think about what we bring with us to grieve. Hold us in our sorrow. We think about what, where we have sinned and we bring those sins with us too. Forgive us and cleanse us in your presence. 
and we bring our hopes. God, set afire our faith so that we can trust you more and know more who you truly are. In Jesus we pray. Amen. We're going to sing together, When Heaven's Bright with Mystery. The words are on your screen, and uh, we're going to uh, hear the music, which again has been uh, generously prepared for us by Ink Young Lee. Thank you, Ink. few years now, uh, I've been meandering us through the Gospel of John. It's one of the four accounts of Jesus that are given to us in the Christian Bible. Uh, so what I've been doing uh, is, you know, I'll explore a little bit of it, a, a chapter or two, and then, and then put it aside, and we, we focus on other things in our worship, and then, and then come back to it. So today we're coming back, and um, we're at a point near the end, well, near the end of Jesus' ministry, the end of Jesus' life, though there's still a lot more in the gospel to go, uh, Jesus is gathered with his closest friends, his followers, and it's their last time together before his death and resurrection, and he has important things for them, and for us too. Jesus has just finished, get this, washing his disciples' feet. Jesus is our master, our, our teacher, our Lord. And he's done this task 
which in their culture was reserved for the lowest in society. He's, he is serving us. And when you think about it, and certainly for those first disciples, it's breathtaking. It's also disorienting. And then Jesus goes on to say that one of his closest is going to betray him. Now we pick up. Uh, listen to what Jesus says next. Before we hear God's word, let us pray. God, as we hear this scripture, take us back into that room where they first heard Jesus say these things. By your spirit, give us an experience of that. And then bring what Jesus said then forward into our rooms now so that we can experience what Jesus says, what he promises in our own lives. Amen. I'm reading from the Gospel of John, starting in chapter 13, verse 31, and continuing into chapter 14. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now the human one has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I am with you for a little while longer. You will look for me, but as I told the Jewish leaders, I also tell you now, where I'm going, you can't come. I give you a new commandment, love each other. Just as I have loved you, so you also must love each other. This is how everyone will know that you are my disciples, when you love each other. Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I am going, you can't follow me now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I'll give up my life for you. Jesus replied, will you give up your life for me? I assure you that you will deny me three times before the rooster crows. And Jesus continued, don't be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. My father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When I go and to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me so that where I am, you will be too. You know the way to the place I'm going. And this is God's word, the good news of Jesus. So sit with me for a bit with that scripture. What's going on here? Remember, our Lord has just carried out what in that culture was a slave's task, washing others' feet. 
and he's saying one of them is going to betray him. And then Peter, who seems so strong to save his own skin, is going to say he never knew Jesus. And Jesus is talking about going away and we can't go with him. And, and jumping ahead, Jesus will soon be arrested. He'll be put through a sham trial. He'll be tortured, condemned, executed on a cruel cross. And Jesus will be gone, ripped away. I feel what this is already doing to them and, and what will be churning inside them as they're dragged through the next hours and days. There's a Greek word that's used here, terrasso. It means agitated, stirred up, shaken. Now, not many of us have been through such an intense, terrifying experience like they're going through, though I know some of you have. Still, can we imagine it? We've had our own experiences. We've been bewildered. Things have crashed onto us. We've been afraid. No idea what to do. No clue where to go. And, and the signposts that have marked our way through each day, the things that have anchored us, they're all mixed up and confused or simply gone. And when that happens, you're shaken up and stirred to rasso. Of course, I started thinking about this pandemic. It's quite different than what those first disciples were experiencing. It doesn't have the same moment by moment intensity. No, this is long and it's getting longer. It's a drawn out, stretching, exhausting, a numbing confusion that's draining. shaken and stirred up to wrestle. When you lose your job, when a marriage breaks apart, when someone dies, you know, my, my family's experiencing that this week and and as hard as it's been, we know it's just the beginning. And we're shaken, we're stirred up. Tarasso. And in times like these, we're just waiting for God to show up and settle things down. Isn't that part of the God description? God's job description, at least as we imagine it should be. But then Jesus, he, he's talking about going somewhere else and without us. So what does Jesus tell us about that place he's going to? Well, not much, but listen. He calls it his father's house. Now there is a place he's called his father's house before. Uh, it's that place where his parents found him when he was a preteen and had wandered off from them. It's that place where later in life, he caused a near riot, throwing out those who had made it into their marketplace.
That's right. It's the temple. The Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Jesus called it his heavenly father's house. Now, these people knew. They knew God is everywhere. God is the creator of all that is everything physical, everything spiritual, and God's presence fills all creation. The temple didn't deny that, but it was the most thin place where you could say heaven and earth overlapped and God's presence was thickest. And this is where Jesus says he's going. My father's house. But if you, you took time to read ahead to what happens, Jesus never goes to the temple. He's been there before many times. But in the hours before he dies and even after his resurrection, he does not go back. So when he says he's going to his father's house, what then does he mean? And that promise he gives to those first disciples that they'll be able to join him. He also gives that to us. But the Jerusalem temple was destroyed just 40 years after. It's long gone. So we're not going there. So what's this father's house Jesus is talking about? It's got to be someplace that's, that's temple-like. Maybe it's the reality that the temple was pointing to, to an existence that is thick with God's presence. Is it the heaven then? Heaven that we can go to when we die? After all, this is a passage that gets read all the time at funerals. Well, I think it is. Though maybe it's even more than what we imagine when we say heaven. I wonder if it's when in the fullness of time, God will remake all of creation and everything God will renew and restore and everything will be filled with God's presence. Not hidden, but thick with it. In ways we now find unimaginable. And, and maybe after death, God gives us a taste of experiencing that. Until we can all experience it together. I'm thinking that's the father's house Jesus is talking about here. And the temple was just pointing to it. Well, what else does Jesus say about it? He says it's spacious. When I read the passage, some of you may have thought, that's not how I remember it. The, the, the translation most of us is familiar with is, uh, is called the King James Version. In my father's house are many mansions. Now, to our ears today, that can be misleading. I, I always thought it was talking about you know, a row of big houses, the kind you'd find in some of those exclusive subdivisions somewhere. We think mansion and we think of an enormous place where rich people live. But in, in the King James days, the early 1600s, that word mansion I discovered did not have that broad, that big house for rich people meaning. It didn't yet. Mansion simply meant 
meant uh, a place to live. In some way, it's related to the French word, maison, house. Nothing particularly fancy about it, at least obviously so. But that's why most current translations will say something like, in my father's house are many rooms or many dwelling places. The idea is that this God-filled reality, heavenly and maybe earthly, is spacious. Plenty of room. More than enough. There will be nothing cramped about it. No sheltering in our little homes. There's nothing limited about it. There will never be a no vacancy sign hanging out front. There's always room. And that struck me because in, in the father's house in Jerusalem, that, that temple, only a select few could go inside, the priests. And, and in the most precious place inside, the Holy of Holies, only one person, the high priest, could go in once a year. It was very exclusive. But in this picture, Jesus is painting and promising the Father's house will have room enough for everyone. Now, remember, Jesus says he's leaving. His death and his resurrection together will be his departure. And he's going to go ahead of those first disciples, and he's gone ahead of us. And he's gone to get all of this ready. When he completes his saving work, Jesus begins this new reality, this Father's house fullness. Really, it's such a simple and beautiful picture. Jesus is the host. He's, he's getting everything ready for you to arrive. He's setting it up perfectly for you. So you will right away be at home in a way you've never experienced before. But there's even more that I noticed. It's, it's not just that Jesus has gone away um, and is off somewhere else while we're stuck here. He, he has sent his spirit, the Holy Spirit, more of God's presence to, to comfort and companion us. And, and by the spirit, Jesus continues to be with us and within us, leading us, teaching us, defending us, saving us. And when the time is right, he's going to move us into his father's house. He's not only setting up the place, he's driving, he's loading up the moving truck and driving us to the front door. And he's there forever and will be there forever. Honestly, I. I can barely begin to imagine what it is like. But I realize I, I don't really need to. All I need to know is that Jesus, beautiful Jesus, will be there. And nothing can be better than that. And that's why when Jesus got them together at that Last Supper, he could say to them. And why Jesus can say to us now when we're being shaken and stirred up, do not be troubled. Remember that Greek word, terasso. Well, Jesus says, me terasesto, do not be shaken. 
Do not be stirred up. Trust God, he says. Trust me. For even in the midst of your most troubled times, Jesus is preparing for you that spaciousness, that Godfulness, that with God home that is your home. Perfect for you, with room to spare for us all. He's promised. He's already doing it. So you can live in this place now, unshaken, unstirred. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us let us pray. God, the the exuberance, the excitement of that song and that simple invitation. Come with me to my father's house. God, you invite us into your place and you make everything just right, fit for each of us. Um, Because you love us and you have so much for your people and you delight to be with us God, there's so much in us that makes us not really fit for your house, but you're doing all that work too. You're cleaning us up. You're setting us right. You're healing our broken souls. And you're giving life to our treaded down bodies. You fit us for heaven to live with you there. God, we delight in the promise of Jesus that his departure is not bad news. It's the best news. For just as he is always with us now, he's also getting everything ready for us tomorrow. And God, how we trust him to do that. And God, we need to hear this word. We need to hear this promise, especially in days like these days. Where our our, our, our community, our country, our world continues to creak and moan under this pandemic. And we're worried about vaccine supplies and also many places where there's no horizon of hope to get vaccines anytime soon. And so we pray for those who are, who are making them, those who are who are transporting and doing all the logistics and and those who will be delivering them. Lord, give us success. Give us freedom from this disease. And we pray for for people in places too where where there's other things going on. In, In Russia. And protests against government corruption and oppression. In Myanmar, where its fragile democracy has been cut off. Lord, bring peace with justice to those places. Protect people from harm.
God, we we pray for those in, in our congregation and in, in our friendships who are struggling with illness. We pray for Bernice Hill, who's in St. Joseph's Hospital, uh, having broken her hip. Heal her, please. And give her peace. And the knowledge that with you things are well. We pray for Lynn's brother, Roger, and thank you that he's recovering well from surgery. We pray for Jocelyn and Beverly as they continue to grieve for Brian. We pray for Barb and Greg and their family. For Pat, Robert and Sharon and their children as they grieve for Sam. We pray for the Lodge family. Uh, Greg, the dad, is a nephew of Rosemary Bird. And uh, their son was killed in a car accident and their daughter was severely injured. Please give her protection and healing. For all these who grieve and so many more, give the comfort of good grief of healing tears, the patience of sitting in the moment, of deeply missing the one who has died and doing so with hope with faith in your promises and show us how we can help them. God, we pray these things in Jesus' name. As he taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to uh, to thank you. I know just talking to you uh, all to different people in the congregation, the, the many different ways you're helping one another, you're helping your neighbors, you're blessing our community. Thank you. Thank you for the, your generosity to uh, our church congregations and the ways you continue to serve and support who we are and what we're doing together. Let's dedicate our gifts. God, thank you for you have sent us on your mission. You have called us and formed us as your people and commissioned us to bless your world. Thank you for all, for all the gifts you give us to do this work and for the ways we can give and reflect your generosity. God, we dedicate these gifts to you. Thank you. Amen. Let's join in singing our last song. It's All the Way My Savior Leads Me. 
and it's stats number 636, I think, just a second. 635 in Voices United. I'll just get it on the screen here. And Inc. told me uh, when she sent the recording to me that it was her grandma's favorite song. And so as she recorded it, she also sang along with it. So let's join together and sing along with Inc. Wherever we go, we will go. God will already be there. God, help me notice. Help us notice together. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you as you go. Trust this and know it is true. Amen. Well, we, we hope this worship time has been a blessing, that God has used it to speak to you, to encourage you, and to fill you with God's love and God's hope. Let me just tell you a bit about us. Both the Alora and Bethany congregations are in Centre Wellington Township. That's roughly to the north of Guelph, Ontario. Bethany's church building is in the countryside, surrounded by farms and fields. It's a small congregation where right away you are welcomed. Alora UC's building is in the heart of the village of Alora. Our business is to be about God's business. Though neither congregation is worshiping in its building right now because of the pandemic, God's business keeps on going, and so do we. 
We are living God's passionate love for all creation. We are growing deeper as followers of Jesus, looking higher to celebrate God in all we do. We're drawing closer as a community and we're reaching wider to share blessings in our many neighborhoods, near and far. Whatever your story, whatever your faith background, there is a space for you amongst us. I'd love to connect with you. You can find Alora United on Facebook. You can visit our website, alorauc.org. And as I said at the beginning, you can email me, ministeralorauc at whiteman.ca. That's W-I-G-H-T-M-A-N dot C-A. And remember, wherever you are and wherever you're going, God is with you. God is in those places. And may God the Spirit help you notice. Goodbye.